Um, yeah, yeah. Sold it about, you know, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're here at, at a rally at Clark Park in Philadelphia right now. We're coming up live on all services. Thank you for tuning in to Unicorn Riot. Support our website, unicornriot.ninja slash donate. You can support our work. I'm here interviewing uh, someone who's uh, involved in an election campaign. Um, can you talk about uh, what the uh, purpose of the campaign is right now? Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Colin. Uh, I'm a library worker here in Philadelphia, member of District Council 33, Local 696, uh, Unity Caucus. And I'm here to promote and march with Philadelphians uh, for Palestine, but also we are urging all Pennsylvanians to vote in the presidential primary April 23rd to write in on the presidential line uncommitted. We are here to send a strong message to President Biden and the entire federal government uh, to end the war in Gaza. Okay, cool. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we're just uh, still getting the live stream uh, running, so I'll hold, have you hold a minute. I I jumped the gun slightly, but uh, so one of the pose, one of the things here as we come up live, there's this banner for uh, Ghost Robotics, which uh, is a company that makes these robots. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Coming up live here, we're at Clark Park in Philadelphia. We'll wait a minute. Thank you all for tuning in. Hey, this is Danny Unicorn Riot. We're here at Clark Park in Philadelphia right now. And uh, do you want to start, start it from the top again? Let's lay out what's going on. Thank you. Yes. All right, thank you, Unicorn Riot. My name is Colin. I'm a library worker here in Philadelphia. I'm a member of District Council 33. And uh, I'm here with plenty of other Philadelphians to march uh, for Palestine, but also to get the word out to all of Pennsylvania that we need to vote uncommitted on the presidential line in the primary on April 23rd, Tuesday, April 23rd. Um, we are writing in uncommitted on the presidential ballot because we need to send a message to President Biden that he is uh, you know, splitting his base of support by continuing unrelentlessly to support Israel's ongoing genocide in Gaza. Uh, the demands of our uncommitted movement are that President Biden cut U.S. military aid to Israel, you know, institute a cease permanent and lasting ceasefire immediately to reinstate funding for UNRWA, the UN agency which delivers aid to Gazans and all Palestinian refugees. And, uh, he needs to change course because the path to victory in November lies through Pennsylvania. And that's what we're trying to prove here. All 67 counties are on notice and Biden is going to wake up Tuesday or Wednesday morning and realize he is in a whole lot of hot water because he's going to lose Pennsylvania if he doesn't change course. When's the primary April 23rd is the primary in Pennsylvania. And I encourage all viewers, if, you, if you're in a state where your primary hasn't happened yet, find out if there's a similar movement happening. I know New Jersey is gearing up. Uh, there's an uncommitted movement there. Uncommitted will be on the ballot. Uh, find out what's happening and uh, keep the pressure up. Keep calling your congressional representatives uh, because ultimately it's our obligation as Americans to compel our federal government to change course and end the genocide. Thanks. Yeah, all the, un the whole uncommitted Pennsylvania, you can find it on Instagram, uh, you know, Twitter. I think the handles are uncommitted underscore PA. There's a website. You can find out all the information. There's social media toolkits, you know, and plenty of kind of helpful tips on explaining this to your friends and family. Excellent. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, beyond uh, Free Palestine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. And your name again was? I'm Colin. Okay, cool. Thank you. So we're out live on Unicorn Riot. Thank you, Colin. So the rally's here at Clark Park. We're over by the Fish Bowl on the south side of the park. So we'll go check out the speakers. There's a, there's a few hundred people here, a couple hundred people at least. 
Um, and uh, this was definitely called with a bunch of uh, labor unions. Um, we've seen Unite here, we see SEIU. Um, so there's a bunch of different unions. Um, there's also these funny dogs that were hopping all over when I was setting up my camera. These dogs are they're ready for action. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to come up. We interviewed this man who's speaking right now. So I'm going to change my audio. We'll go check this out. Um, we're going to we're going to have some more information. We, uh, we got some other reports in the works right now. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Live now in Philly. individual. We could not have organized this worker rally for Palestine a year ago. In fact, it was only after the October 7th Intifada began that many of us paid a lot more attention to the struggle for a free Palestine. Isn't that right? So th there are now more opportunities and potential to build greater worker solidarity with Palestine. 55% of Americans, quote, no longer approve of Israel's military campaign against Hamas in Gaza, unquote. That's according to a March 27th poll from, from Gallup. A Data for Progress poll on February 29th said, voter support for the U.S. calling for a permanent ceasefire is 74%. Yeah, where are the politicians? So polls say the majority of people want a ceasefire the majority of the population are workers, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. So it's likely many of your co-workers feel like you do, yeah. more than you think. Yeah. If you want a Palestine without, without Zionist occupation, terror, and genocide, you owe it to your siblings in Palestine to organize your co-workers as much as possible. Isaac Newton's <laughs> Isaac Newton's first law of motion states, quote, a body at rest will remain at rest, and a body in motion will remain in motion unless it is acted upon by an external force, unquote. Most of your co-workers may want a permanent ceasefire. Many may want an end to the occupation and a free Palestine. But unless we organize that awareness into some type of collective action, unless your co-workers are acted upon your, by your persuasive force, your co-workers will tend to remain at rest Right. And the potential for mass action will evaporate. Mm -hmm. Action can mean engaging in BDS, boycott, divest, sanction. Uh -huh. Google the list of companies on the BDS list to, to see if who you work for is violating BDS and organize your co-workers to do something about it. Yeah. Action can take the form of union members persuading their union local officials to be the first union to call on its members to vote uncommitted in the PA primary. Any union here want to be the first? Can we do it? As Workers United, in unions or not, we can do a lot to disrupt Zionist propaganda and the U.S. war machine. 
which is paid for after all by our taxes. Today's turnout is impressive, but we shouldn't be complacent because we can do a lot more. Mass awareness has created a potential for large mass protest by workers, by unions. It would great, greatly benefit the struggle by Palestinian workers for their freedom. Yes. It's up to all of us here today to put that potential into action. Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, 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 free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Woo! Woo! All right. Hey, y'all. My name's Hannah. I'll be your other MC this afternoon. I am a member of the Philadelphia Federation for Teachers. But I don't really claim the PFT because as a Palestinian teacher, the PFT doesn't claim me. Yeah. Oh, yep, I'm gonna speak on it, y'all. The PFT was part of getting our training for Palestine about the truth of the history there and what's happening now, shut down by the district. The PFT has been quiet when student art projects and voices about their experience as Palestinians, as black students, has been shut down by the district. In fact, when one of our educators for Palestine, two of our educators for Palestine, hung up posters made by Palestinian students and faced administrative discipline for this, the PFT told them to apologize to the Zionist teachers whose feelings were hurt. So I am here as a proud educator for Palestine, but I'm gonna need the PFT to get it together. Our next speaker is gonna be Sunita from the Unity Caucus. our 
workplace rights, our power, and our dignity. Acting as though all that we have earned, all that we have fought for, is theirs. Right. To make the connection even clearer, some powers that be have decided to use our hard-earned tax dollars to pay for apartheid abroad when this money could be used for essential community services right. like schools right. and libraries right. and expanded mental health services. Right. And while we are on the topic, why are Penn and, De Penn and Drexel's tax-free endowments going towards investments in surveillance and military technology rather than fund our schools. No one knew the ghastly reality of Palestinian oppression better than Palestinian poet and professor, Dr. Rafat al -Arir. Rafat was born and raised in Gaza City, and Gaza City is where he died murdered by an airstrike on December 6, 2023, after weeks of deliberate terror and intimidation by the Israeli government. Before his murder, Rafat shared a poem he had written titled, If I Must Die. The poem shares elements of dignity, endurance, and resistance with its own poetic ancestor, If We Must Die, by Claude McKay. McKay wrote of the struggle of black Americans against racism and oppression in the early 20th century. He says, we will face the murderous, cowardly pack, yes. pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. And Rafat, Rafat says, if I must die, you must live yes. to tell my story, to, tell, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it bring a tale. For those who find themselves weary, exhausted, and alone in the face of oppression and torture, the toxic legacy of colonialism, know this. History begins today. We begin today. Because the power is, was, and forever shall be ours. Justice is our demand. Justice is our demand. No peace on stolen land. No peace on stolen land. Justice is our demand. Justice is our demand. No peace on stolen land. No peace on stolen land. Justice is our demand. Justice is our demand. No peace on stolen land. No peace on stolen land. All right, everybody. Our last speaker here at the park is coming to us from uh, Unite Here Local 274. Uh, give it up for G. From the river to the sea. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, hello everyone. My name is G. I'm a concessions worker at the Wells Fargo Stadium. I'm with the Union. Thank you. Thank you. I'm with the union known as Unite Here, one of the best unions I have ever met in my life. Okay. Uh, <laughs> on April 9th, I participated in a strike at the union. I was in a picket line for about four hours. I was on the bullhorn for about two to three hours. Okay, okay. Righteous, righteous. Yeah, I know how to use my diaphragm. What can I say? Um, um, if you see us picketing again, you might see us on the news, whatever. If you see us picketing again, please feel free to join us over at Broughton Patents. We would love to see y'all. It's a good time. It's a really good time. Yeah. Um, but I just want to say very much so that the exploitation that we experience as workers here on American soil is very much connected to the murder and exploitation of Palestinians abroad. Yeah. Oppression everywhere is connected. Yeah. And I think sometimes people think that in order to organize their workplace, they have to be like a special person, like a Malcolm X or something. And Malcolm X was a normal person. Yeah. We're all normal people, we're all workers, and we're all capable of organizing our workplace. Yeah. In fact, one of the best ways to organize is to be normal. Yeah. Um, it is such an honor to have spoken today. This is my first time speaking in public for like this kind of thing. Um, and I want to say thank you to the people who organized this. I want to say uh, Free Palestine. Thank you. All right. Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to get started walking here in a few minutes. Uh, if anybody has a large banner, if you want to come, bring that to the front over here in the street. And uh, yeah, we're going to make some safety announcements as well before we get going. Please stay behind the truck, behind the banners. Please stay within the route outlined by our marshals. And if anyone needs a ride for accessibility, we do have some cars available if you want to come to the front and get a ride for our first stop. Thanks, y'all. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice! No peace! Take it to the streets and fuck, fuck the, the police. police! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Let's take, take it to the, the streets and fuck, fuck the, the police. police! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Let's take I it to the streets and fuck the police! police. We're here in Philadelphia, Clark Park, West Philly. We've got a march here. It's like several hundred people. We've got a bunch of unions. I see Teamsters 107 um, unite here. So labor is a major theme of the march today. So we're going to try to get some interviews with people and uh, go along with the march. Um, we, th we think we know where the march is headed. Um, and we're going to follow up on that. Uh, yeah. Should be about maybe 20 minutes, some, more or less. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dan at Unicorn Riot. You can support our work at unicornriot.ninja. Um, and we've been uh, you know, covering these uh, street actions and uh, protests and things ha around uh, for the last six months. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for Chris on the back end monitoring the video system. Thank you. And then also earlier we did interview 
uh, someone who's working with the uh, the Undecided campaign that is uh, pushing to mark um, Undecided on the presidential primary in 10 days in Pennsylvania. And uh, earlier, uh, Undecided turned in pretty good results uh, for Undecided uh, on pretty short notice in uh, Michigan and Minnesota as well. So that's been one of the ways people have been sending a message during the election year. So we're going to check this out and uh, try to get some interviews. Thank you all for tuning in. There goes uh, the, the guy with the flag and the two dogs that were going bouncing around all over when I was trying to set up my camera. So would any of you want to do an interview? If I can't, we're live right now. Would any of you want to do an interview? Um, for pro-Palestine, so um, obviously I just showed up, but we're a part of Food Not Bomb Solidarity, yes, so I'm putting that out there. Food Not. <laughs> Can you say what Food Not Bombs is? And so like Food Not Food Not Bombs is an international organization, um, and we provide like food and water for like protesters, especially like at events. We also do a weekly serve. Um, so that's why we're out here today, just to support the people. We always try to support the people, you know? Cool. Uh, how can people find out about Food Not Bombs in Philly? In Philly, there are, in Philly, there are four chapters of Food Not Bombs. So there's, we're part of Food Not Bombs Solidarity. We serve at 60th and Market in West Philly. There's also West Philly Food Not Bombs. There's also South Philly Food Not Bombs. There's also North Philly Food Not Bombs. And there are a variety of other like food distributions in Philadelphia as well. There's one, there's like two in Gray's Ferry. Yeah. yeah there's like a bunch. There's Kensington, one, at, Kensington yeah, has the one. The SRA does one. Yeah. They do a food distro here in Philly too. Cool. All right. Anything else you want to add right now? Um, you need to join Free Palestine. Yeah. Free Palestine, free the world. Fuck free Palestine. Yeah. Fuck Israel. Fuck, fuck the Israel. cops. <laughs> fuck U.S. imperialism. Yeah. Long live the Intifada. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that's the update from the, the f four different Food Not Bombs chapters that we got here in Philly. All right. So we're going to uh, cut across the triangle here. Uh, the march is heading out uh, east, out of Clark Park, on whatever street that is that bisects Clark Park. I have seen some people speculating how nice it would be if they um, removed this road in the middle of Clark Park. So we're going to catch up here. So there's also a market. Um, I think it's been packing up, but there has been a street market out today. Sorry, give me a second, folks. Hang with me here. There's also a SEPTA trolley paused in the crowd momentarily here. So thank you all for tuning in. Again, this is sort of a worker-oriented uh, demo. Uh, we've seen flags for um, a few different unions in town. Uh, I believe that the leftist group Socialist Revolution is here. Um, we interviewed some of those people. We're going to have we have a report in the works about some of this stuff. It's not out yet. Um, let's see. So we got. You got Ask Me, Ask Me 99, healthcare workers. Uh, the, the poster for the event had a bunch of, um, here's the market. The poster for the event did mention a bunch of unions, several local unions, and other uh, groups.
<laughs> Excuse me, guys. Yes. Would you want to give an interview? No, 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 no. 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 Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. about the genocide in Palestine. I'm outraged about the direction of capitalist society. I'm a communist. I think that the working class needs to organize and fight back to take power from the corporations, from the billionaires, and from their political parties in this country and around the world. So what, uh, what can people in Philadelphia do about the Palestine issues? Well, I think this is an amazing start. I think getting the labor movement um, organized in the streets to bring working class perspective on what's happening in Palestine, what's happening around the world to fight back against the capitalists and, and their agenda for imperialist domination of the world. I think that's an amazing start. I think another thing that workers can do is organize politically. I think we have two parties of the billionaire class, two parties of the capitalists who are obsessed with world domination, who are dedicated to dominating and exploiting the working class, not only in the United States, but around the world. I think that this war, this genocide in Palestine is an important part of this agenda and I think it's time for workers to organize politically, to organize a revolutionary party to fight back against this system and to overthrow it. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Oh, sorry. Absolutely. On May 1st, 
Yeah, at City Hall in Philadelphia, the Revolutionary Communists of America are organizing the biggest May Day demonstration in decades in Philadelphia. We need every worker who wants to fight back against the system, every revolutionary young person, everybody who's in solidarity with Palestine and the struggles of the oppressed to be there. Wednesday, May 1st, 6 p.m., City Hall. So was that, or is it, that was called Socialist Revolution before? We used to be... Yes, yeah, Socialist Revolution is gone. Socialist Revolution is leading the effort to found a new political party, the Revolutionary Communists of America. We're building the communist newspaper. This is issue number one. So that's what we're about. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, could any of you talk about the Drexel? Would anyone want to talk live on Unicorn Riot about Drexel organizing? Would anyone want to talk? Would you want to talk? OK. All right. So we're just trying to, you know, hang out, talk with people involved in this. Every Saturday, come check out the Flower Show. Again, I'm the Flower Child, Handsome Ransom. I've seen your art around town. No, you see Nomad. I'm Handsome Ransom. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Cool. Take care. Many people uh, who are also healthcare workers, um, outraged and disgusted by the U.S.'s support of the Zionist regime, um, specifically the bombing of hospitals, um, and, for example, the many patients and doctors and nurses who have been murdered um, at their places of work, at the sites where they're supposed to receive care. Um, and we're here uh, with many organized and unorganized workers um, to say that we don't support genocide. Um, is that a hat about Chinatown? Can it is. About, can you talk about that real quick? Uh, uh, sure, I'm not involved in that fight, but um, Chinatown is fighting for its preservation and its cultural um, existence and, uh, you know, intimately. I just, I just want to film the hat thing. you got a sign on the side of your hat that says, Oh, sure. Save, save Chinatown. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That. No, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, people. Campaign. Totally. Yeah. People are fighting for um, their existence in Palestine, cool. in Philly, and intimately related. All right. Uh, do you want to keep walking? Do you have anything else you want to add? Or? Um, no, that's it. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. 
Appreciate it. So that was a, a healthcare worker talking about this. There's definitely a bunch of healthcare workers here. Croppers, right? From the 19th to 18th century. When the Atlantic slave trade brought my ancestors here. Okay? So the Palestinians fight and black Americans fight are all in one to fight against hegemony. The period faces government, right? who is complicit with IDF in Israel, right? So they use taxpayers' money to fund this. So we're going to change that with sacrifice. Whether you march, you hate it in your heart, you hate it in your feet, that's why we march and change, okay? Is there a, is there like a part of, is this part of the class conflict, part of like a larger system? Can you talk about that at all? Yes, well, you know, this we is, come on, yeah, yeah. this is um about the have and the have not. See, you have the super rich, the middle class, and the poor. And it's all based on race, social class, and geography, right? So you have the new Jim Crow, the prison system, that profits off of black suffering, okay? So this all to keep these capitalists rich, the venture capitalists, David Alderson, Josh Harris, Apollo, Vanguard, okay? These are the people that's controlling this, the 12 tables of evil, okay? Vanguard, um, the Apollo, all of these Wall Street companies that profit off of suffering. War is big business. War is big business, right? Or it's military because it has to be bloodshed to make money. So human suffering, they sit back, right, and love it. So war is big business. They call arm dealers, okay? So we're going to stop this. We're going to disrupt and agitate it, all right, because it's wrong. Now, you have to hate it in your heart. And this is why it comes out your mouth, right? And then you sacrifice, all right? With your hands and your whole body to stop this. It's been going on for centuries. These bankers, these international bankers that sit back. The African Royal Company from Britain that funded the slave trade, okay? With Henry the Navigator. He was the first in the 15th century to go through Africa. So it's, so it's part of that larger history, right? It's, it's part of the larger history, but it's all connected, you know, from the Balfour Declaration, okay? In the 20, early of the 20th century, all right? When they, when they sent a letter to Lord Rothschild, it said, Palestine and Israel, that land is yours. You hear? So they put him there, right, to cause suffering, 75 years of pain. So this must stop. You know, they have to be fair. We going, the only way is bloodshed. You have to sacrifice. That's the only thing they understand, all right? From the 20th century early Haymark massacre, it was a massacre in Chicago where the workers stood up, right, against this. 
type of atrocity. The workers in Haymar, they sacrificed themselves, okay, against the police in Chicago. So all of that is connected. And then you got the guy, Bushnell. He sacrificed himself. We can double time. Let's double time. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll yeah, so that's what it is. That's why I'm here to march. Because I hate capitalism. You have to tear it down. You see, it can't exist. Because only a few profit it and live off of it while the, while, while the 99% suffer. So that's why we're here. Gotcha. Anything else you want to add right now? Well, this is what I want to hear. It's a beautiful thing. Look at the people. So more people are getting on board because truth negates falsehood. Truth negates falsehood certainly negates doubt. All right? And, and sincerity negates hypocrisy. So the people are filling in their heart, right? The KKK, the IDF, in the PPD is here, right, to intimidate us, but we're not being intimidated. Thank you very much. I am Jafar Ramadan, right? I am an ancestor of atrocities to my people, and I'm here to fight. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jafar. Thank you, Jafar. Appreciate it. Did I hit some points? Yeah, yeah, you hit some points. Thank you, Jafar. All right, so. We're here at Woodland and Woodland and 46 right now. So we're going to check out the speeches. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're live right now. So that, that went out. Yeah. It's live on Unicorn Riot on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitch. It's a beautiful thing. Assalamu alaikum. I'm rocking to a law barrel. Kacho. Thank you. So we're going to check out this speech over here. There's like. You bicycle police. Excuse me. Which side are you on? You also see the IWWs here as well. genocide against the Tutsi, a genocide that President Bill Clinton refused to name as such when it was happening because then the international community would have been responsible for doing something. That's right. Our leaders love to memorialize and apologize after the fact, but never act to save lives, beginning with our nation's original sins of slavery and Native American genocide. And that's exactly what we see happening in Gaza right now. Make no mistake that lives are on the line, not only in Palestine, but also right here in Philly. As I was organizing with parents and families to keep our school open, so many of them talked about their children's safety, about longer walks to school through hostile neighborhoods that would lead to an increase in gun violence. And indeed, since Alexander Wilson shut down in 2013, every year I have been a teacher here, I have had at least one student shot, if not killed. We have seen the rates of gun violence in our city going up every single year since 2013, including the shooting at the Clara Muhammad Masjid on Eid on Tuesday. None of our children should have to fear getting shot on their way to school, whether it is in our Philly neighborhoods or at a checkpoint in Occupy Palestine. That money could be going to funding public health. It's not complicated when over 13,000 children are dead, over 200 schools have been bombed. Anyone who calls themselves an educator should be screaming for it to stop. You know, the same week that a video screen Zionist truck came to harass not only me but also my students, dismissal at our school, our school's water fountains broke. The filters broke and our children didn't have clean water to drink. So, so all of those 
Zionists who are afraid about the safety of our students when they hear their teacher say that she doesn't believe in genocide and thinks all children deserve to live? The thousands of dollars they put towards high-tech trucks and full-time camera staff, why don't they put that towards our students' education? of 3,011 children in Philadelphia for a year. It is equal to 2.4 times the budget for all of our instructional supports and after-school programs, and twice as much as we pay for substitutes in a year. It's simple math. If little Johnny Fetterman has enough money to staff our schools or to give high-powered bombs to international war criminals, which is better for our children? I want to end today the same way I began by asking y'all to look around. This sanitized, gentrified St. Joe's building where our children used to learn is the occupier's ultimate goal. When I look at it, I see Jared Kushner's sneering face when he just this week said Gaza has beautiful waterfront properties once we clear out all the Palestinians. to uplift that Israel is in the process of the largest land grab in the West Bank right. since 1967. That Palestinians there fear settler violence backed by the IOF on a daily basis while the world looks the other way. This is what it looks like when you put profit over people. But we the people, whether we are from Philly or Palestine or both, cannot simply be erased. We will endure because we are of, for, and from this land. Its sustenance is in our resilience, its sanctity is in our enduring faith, and its beauty gives us the humanity to hold on to our compassion in a world that attempts to deny our humanity and discount our lives. That is why from West Philly to the West Bank, from Haiti to Sudan, from the Congo River to the Mediterranean Sea, we must continue to raise our voices and demand money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation, money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation, not for war and occupation. Thank you. Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! Viva, viva Palestina! All right, I'm oh my hat! Oh my God, next up we got Nayla for Healthcare Workers for Palestine. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Nayla Leban, and I'm an OBGYN resident here in Philadelphia and a proud member of my residency union, CIR, and of Healthcare Workers for Palestine. I would like to make it known that the following statement is representative of my own personal views and not those of my employer. Healthcare heroes. It's a term we throw around often, but I didn't truly understand what it meant until the last six months. Until I saw doctors in Gaza operating in the dark. Until I saw doctors in Gaza singing to children to distract them from the procedures they are forced to endure without anesthesia. Until I saw doctors in Gaza stay behind in hospitals under direct attack by Israeli forces, pledging to not abandon their most vulnerable patients. Doctors here, myself included, are nothing compared to the doctors and nurses in Gaza who risk their lives and well-being every single day to care for others. The doctors who have found themselves the targets, the primary targets, of Israel's weaponization of health care. Yeah. Yeah. Despite the obvious 
this immorality and illegality of this. There is no widespread recognition among the medical community and organizations such as the American Medical Association, which despite speaking up against the targeting of Ukrainian healthcare infrastructure by Russia, has remained absolutely silent about the targeting of hospitals, ambulances, health centers, and doctors in Palestine. Even some of my colleagues continue to support Israel in their genocidal endeavors and attempt to justify these horrific acts despite being doctors themselves. Since when is this our new normal? Since when is it justifiable to bomb a hospital? Since when is it a legitimate military tactic to strip doctors down to their underwear and parade them in the ice cold rain? even begin to fathom the levels of immorality and depravity that would prompt a government and a military to commit these heinous war crimes and violations of international law. But as inhumane and disgusting as this behavior is, it is repulsively clever just the same. There is a reason Israel's genocide has taken the lives of more doctors, aid workers, and journalists than any other conflict in this century. Because targeting those that heal others, those that care for others, and those that shed light on the suffering of others is one of the most effective ways to not only physically decimate a population, but to extinguish any sense of hope or optimism for a better future. But the reason we unionize is exactly this. We unionize in order to use our collective voice and, and power to protect ourselves and those in our community from being abused. treated by a system that seeks to exploit us. We need to bring that same energy to our fight for our healthcare brothers and sisters in Gaza. The doctors and nurses who aren't fighting for better pay or less hours, but for the right to live, the right to treat patients with comfort and dignity. Dr. Ghassan Abu Sitta said after leaving Gaza in November, being forced to leave Gaza in November, my heart and my soul are still there with my patients. I remember their names and their wounds. I will fight until they receive the treatment they need and the justice they deserve. My heart is broken in ways I never knew was possible. Since October, I have worn a Palestine pin on my hospital badge to honor Dr. Abu Sitta, to honor all the physicians who continue to treat patients in Gaza and the West Bank, and the physicians who have been killed doing just that. I wear this pin to show anyone who meets me that I stand on the side of justice and liberation, that I stand against settler colonialization, against apartheid, against racial supremacy, but most importantly, against any breach of sanctity of health care and healing. So I ask you, in this fight for the rights of the most vulnerable people in Gaza, in solidarity with the most courageous people in Gaza, which side are you on? Okay. One more speaker before we move out of this intersection but first I want to throw it back to 1924 when I say an injury to one you say is an injury to all an injury to one an injury to one an injury for one free free Palestine free 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 Palestine intersection is going to be Jax from IWW. They're going to break it down for you and then we're going to hit the road again. All right. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jax. I'm a labor and tenant organizer. So I organize with the IWW and also the Philly Tenants Union. Uh, and also organize my workplace, which is Philadelphia Legal Assistance, to now have a workers union who is also here. In order to win demands as a working class, we need to unify under one big union. We need to come together, be in coordination, and build structures to support us when the capitalist system ultimately fails. It's time for the labor movement to be more aggressive and principled in organizing industries towards general strikes in solidarity with Palestine. The 
general strike is a weapon of the working class. So instead of focusing on electing politicians who ignore our calls for a ceasefire, we must build our own political power through industrial organization. There's a lot of calls for general strikes, but as it stands now, we do not have the organization or control over American industries to pull this off. Many are committed to ideals, but it doesn't how ma matter how many people have thoughts about what should happen. What matters is how deeply we are connected to one another, how we bring each other into the struggle by working along the masses, and, how, and to what degree we are organized. <laughs> the capitalists have wealth, they have power, and they have organizations that legitimize and normalize their interests. But who does all the work? We do. We do. We do all the work. And if we do not organize, we will keep succumbing to the military-industrial complex that feeds on our labor to commit atrocities globally and criminalize our attempts to stop it. What do capitalists care about? Money. Business as usual, they want profits. And that is why strikes work. transform unions into fighting organizations, we must engage with our fellow workers in practice every single day, developing the emotional maturity to relate to, educate, and push our peers. You can start small. It doesn't have to start with a strike at your workplace. Talk to a coworker this week. Have a conversation about what they're doing for Palestine and ask them to do more. Ask them what it would mean to take action at your workplace in solidarity with Palestine. I know it's scary, it's uncomfortable, a lot of the ways that organizing conversations happen are counter to the way we're socialized to engage with each other. But with practice and support from people engaging in the same work, trust me, it gets easier. Yes. Yes. If your coworkers and neighbors are already on board, take things a step further. Ask them to come to a rally or to a meeting with you. And if your coworkers and neighbors are here with you today, Think about who else you can bring and keep growing our numbers and keep getting stronger. It's every worker and tenant's responsibility to get organized. Whether it's joining or creating a union or organizing to strengthen the unions you're already in towards political demands. There are resources and people willing to help you to do it. You just have to seek it out and be willing to liberate yourself. Conditions for radical change are here, and as workers who make the city and the entire world function, it's our responsibility to organize, to take control of the industries we work in, and demand a free Palestine. Thank you. Free Palestine! Alright y'all, we are going to continue marching, we are going to continue taking it to the streets, Check, check. Here you go. Here you go. Can you just talk about why you're here today? Sure. I'm here today uh, to join my fellow comrades and friends and uh, folks who protest against Israel's crimes in Palestine right now. Uh, I've been coming to protest and alongside a lot, a lot of people here since October. Uh -huh. and, and we're here to protest that and like to, to a lot of it I see is about the uncommitted vote right now, taking ex a specific direct actions that you can take, right? So today is about workers, today is about the unions, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and the uncommitted vote. Can you so. talk about why it's important for unions to work on things like this? And we can walk and yeah, sort of sure. Like, can you just talk about the union angle? 
Yeah, well, I mean, so union one is just because of the power that they have when it comes to how many people they, they have, right? They have a lot of people that they can tap upon. And so the, we're never going to do anything. We just individually advocate for things, right? So that's where the part of the unions come, especially when several unions come together, such as today, right? You see a number of unions here today. Um, and so the power, and also recognizing, as a lot of speakers have today, recognizing the links between the oppression of workers in the United States and that connected to Palestine, right? So when you make that connection and you leverage the power that unions have historically, then you can make some actual change, right? So that's what today is important. Um, is there anything else you'd want to add or where people can learn more or sort of like anything else about the analysis? I think it's very helpful to understand. Honestly, I would just, I would just, I would encourage everyone to just look up what's going on in Palestine, look at the, the, the different uh, political parties that exist right now. You know, you got DSL folks here, you got PSL folks here. Just unions, forget the politics, just go to unions, uh, look at what's going on, and like become active if you can, right? Because we need more people on the streets if change is ever going to happen. So. Anything else to add? That will be all, man. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So we're, we're live right now, so that went out to everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. change my configuration hold on folks What's up? Um, my name's Dave Fox. I'm out here with Philly DSA. I'm a member of Teamsters Local 107, which unfortunately does not support the call for a ceasefire at the moment, but we're working on it, doing the best we can. Um, 
We got to do whatever we can to free Palestine. The upside of my union protections is that I can say whatever I want about politics with my face out and they can't stop me. My boss has tried to talk to me about it before and I could tell him to go get, get the hell out of my face. Uh, my wife's a delegate for Uncommitted in New Jersey. I think it's important that we support every single effort that we can from the streets to the ballot box to make sure that we can get Palestine free within our lifetime and there's the first intermediate step is we need an immediate permanent ceasefire whatever we can do to that end that's what we got to do shut it down can you talk about how organizing happens inside unions can you talk about that at all yeah absolutely so like within unions uh, unions are more or less progressive in different cases depending on their leadership you can organize to elect better leadership um, I would argue Sean O'Brien has been better than our previous union leadership we had to organize to get that and you got to keep pushing in a more and more progressive direction until we get where we need to go. I know there's some leaders from SEIU here that are with uh, Labor for Black Lives Coalition, and I went with them to different elected officials' offices to push them on that. But obviously, it's a matter of getting enough support. Unions are one of the most effective forms of democracy that we have. So you actually have to have the support within your workplace to get the union in the first place. And then once you have it, you have to have enough support to get the union to do what you need to do, whether that's going on strike or whether that's making demands of the politicians that you've elected. What kind of power? Uh, is there anything else you want to add about this strategy of this? Yeah, so the organizing strategy for this, as far as I understand it, is there's a lot of different organizations coming together, both from a labor side and from a uh, Palestinian organizing side for the Philly Palestine Coalition, uh, Philly DSA, Answer Coalition, lots of different folks are out here. And a lot of folks are organized in their unions already, so it's a matter of getting their unions out here on the streets with us, whether that's, like I said, the guys with uh, Labor for Black Lives, which represents thousands of workers in this state, or any of the other organizations of which people are members, and you get as many a turnout as you can, and then once everybody's out here, Obviously, my coworkers will see this. My <laughs> everybody I know is going to see this. So we got to get everybody on the same page so we can keep exercising whatever leverage we have to change things for Palestinians. Okay. In terms of uh, what's going on in Philly, where can people learn more? Or anything else you want to add? Um, I would definitely encourage people to check out uh, the Philly Palestine Coalition, of which Philly DSA is a member, and I'm a member of Philly DSA. Um, they have protests on a regular basis, uh, different efforts to lobby their um, lobby various politicians and whatnot, including right now I know there's uncommitted campaigns active both here in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, uh, right in here in Pennsylvania, and then an actual line that says justice for Palestine, permanent ceasefire now in New Jersey. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, that's it. Free Palestine. Thank you so much. It was very informative. Thank you. All right, so that was a Teamster member talking with us about the organizing process. Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! We're coming on 48th Street, turning left, turning east. Free, free, free Palestine! Ferry Avenue.
and a gift to fight for the people of Palestine because they are showing us every single day how to be free. Let's talk about why you're here today. What's going on? We're live right now. Well. Palestine is uh, occupied and under attack by Israel. We are here to uh, show a sense of solid solidarity for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, for our brothers and sisters in Palestine who are going through the same struggles that we are going through right here in America. Healthcare is being destroyed over there as it is being destroyed right here in the United States. So why is the union here? What's the union side of this? There are many unions here. Yeah, why is that? There, well, because unions are the best way. Unions are the best way to uh, come together in solidarity. Many people can come together and work can be done because as an individual, as I have learned, watch your back, as an individual, as, as I have learned, uh, we cannot do what we can as a union. What would you suggest people do, whether they want to learn more or get involved or anything else you want to add? Uh, we need everyone to uh, contact your local politicians and let them know that you will divest your investment in the United States if we don't have justice for everyone. So would you say that inside SEIU there's a lot of supporters of the Palestine issue? Would you say it? You I'm sorry? About, inside SEIU, is there support for Palestine in your union, in your union? Yes, there absolutely is. Can you talk about that? Well, we understand how uh, jobs, we fight a struggle here with our union in the United States for health care, for better jobs, for uh, for equal rights, you know. So uh, the struggle is the same. The struggle is the same whether it's Philadelphia or Palestine. We struggle against big money, big corporations. We struggle for freedom and 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 fair treatment. Anything else you want to add? Anything else? Uh, I wanna I wanna say that. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done, but when we work together, we can get it done. Cool. Anything else to add? No peace on stolen land. No peace on stolen land. Justice. Now. We want justice now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. We're out here on the bridge on Grace Ferry. It's allowed up here.
Okay, check one, two. Check one. Check one, two. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, can you just talk about uh, why you're here today? I'm here along with everyone else for Gaza, for the people of Palestine. We want their freedom, so that's why I'm here today. Cool. What, uh, what do you think is important for people to know about this right now? And, and how does, uh, why do you think people are coming out in Philly? Because what's going on is a genocide, and it's been going on for too long, and we need to stop it, and we need our politicians, our leaders, to stand up for the people of Palestine and the people of Gaza to bring it to an end, because it's been going on for far too long, and too many people are being killed and starved. Um, what, why why uh, are the unions and other groups coming out? Can you talk about that at all, sort of the organizing level at all? I'm not personally in a union, but I do think it's a great way to bring people who are like-minded together, and that's why there's so many people out here today. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to add today, or where people can go learn more, or uh, like that? So I think like there are people who, who are personally passing out flyers, so I think um, just finding local unions in your community and finding people who you can reach out to for more information. Um, I feel like silence at this point is definitely complicit. So like there is so much information out there that everyone should have the ability to to go out and find information. Um, yeah. Cool. Anything else you want to add? Free Palestine. Cool. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we're we're up here on the yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we're up on the bridge. There's downtown Philly. Uh, we're coming up uh, over Gray's Ferry. Sorry, over the Gray's Ferry Bridge. With the, just one second. So there's been a few hundred people here marching down from Clark Park in support of Palestine. It's been a very heavy uh, labor-oriented day. A lot of people from different unions. We've seen the IWW talk to a team, Sir, just now, who's also in DSA, I believe. So a lot of different groups. And uh, my understanding is that we're headed to this place called the Penovation District, which is over there. I, or wait, no, sorry. Penovation. The Penovation building is somewhere down here. And uh, I believe there's a company making military equipment for Israel for military purposes that is based over here. So I think we're going to learn more about that shortly. So just hang with us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for Chris on the back end. If you like our live coverage, go to unicornriot.ninja slash donate. Uh, we, you know, we try to bring this stuff to you directly. We're going to have some more research posted about this subject. We have live, we've had a lot of updates from inside the Gaza Strip in the, in the last six months and before that. Uh, we have coverage from the Shifa Hospital area, new videos from there. So we have been trying to bring you original independent coverage from the West Bank and Gaza as well in the last couple of years before this started. So you can check out our website, Unicorn Riot. There's the dogs that have been on the march the whole time. There's the dogs. So thank you all for tuning in. I think the march will be stopping pretty soon. Thank you for tuning in, everyone.
occupation. Not for war and occupation. Check one, two. I'm here today because there's a lot of hopelessness in the world, but there are two things that give me hope. One is organizing with my coworkers to unionize, and the other is the historic resistance of Palestinians to the occupation, the genocidal Israeli occupation. The bravery uh, and the and the steadfastness is inspiring, and those are my two main sources of hope. So I'm here as a labor organizer, and I'm here as someone who supports the full liberation of Palestine within my lifetime. Can you talk about the union angle? What's the union side of this? The union side of this is that the Palestinian trade unions have called on solidarity from trade unions all over the world to educate our co-workers on the genocide that is currently happening, to uh, block the shipment of arms and uh, funds to Israel. And I'm in solidarity with Palestinian workers like I'm in solidarity with all the workers the world over, my co-workers, Palestinian workers. And the only real power we have is when we act collectively and we use our power as workers to withhold our labor and compel the change that is not going to happen unless we do that. So do you feel like getting all people from a lot of different unions here has an impact? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we cannot be effective as a trade union movement, as a union movement, as a labor movement, if all of our unions are siloed, if they're acting independently. And in order to make political change and to politicize our movement, we have to come together and act together. So I'm with GetUp. I'm a grad worker at Penn, and we're unionizing. We're having our election on May 1st, and we're going to crush them, and we're going to win because we're strong. Uh, an election at Penn for grad student workers? Exactly. There are 4,500 of us who are coming together to win a union uh, where we can fight for ourselves and also for our community uh, because Penn uh, absolutely destroys the community in which it exists. It uses its tax-exempt status to fund things like uh, these robot dogs that they send to the border, that they send to Palestine. Um, yeah, so these, uh, the Pennovation Lab, which we are coming up on, uh, one of the labs in there manufactures the robot dogs that often have guns attached to them uh, that they have sent to the U.S. border, that they send to the IDF um, in order to police those borders both here and in Israel and Palestine uh, and uh, to enforce the colonial occupation in both of these, these places. Okay. Uh, so is there a campaign going against the robot dog company? Can you talk about that at all? Uh, there is, yeah. I've uh, been a little busy with our union election. Uh, but there is a campaign against the production of those dogs. Uh, the, uh, the demand, I believe, is for Penn to evict uh, this lab, uh, the Ghost Robotics Lab, from their campus, um, and to stop using, again, their tax-exempt status to support the production of these uh, weapons. Uh, of mass destruction. <laughs> is there anywhere people can go to learn more about that? Uh, there is an Instagram. I think it's 
says shut down Ghost Robotics. Is yeah, it? shut down Ghost Robotics on Instagram. Yeah, cool. that's right. Hell yeah. Anything else you want to add right now? Free Palestine. If you don't have a union, form a union. And if you have a union, fight to make your union fight. Cool. Thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate it. Thank you. There is only one solution. So that's a UAW worker. We're kind of organizing UPenn. And they're telling us about what uh, we're coming up to here. It'll reposition. So, up over here, we're coming to it now. Thank you all for tuning in. This is Danny, Unicorn Riot. We're here at 35th Street and uh, Grace Ferry Avenue in Philadelphia right now. And uh, so, here in this complex across the street, uh, it's called the Penovation District. And uh, so this company, Ghost Robotics, has attracted controversy. Uh, we were at a demo on April 4th, University of Pennsylvania campus. And uh, so it's been controversial. This, this, this uh, robot company is benefiting from a particular tax benefits, uh, tax, basically subsidizing uh, robots that are built for uh, the IDF and other uh, military contractors. So we're going to tune in here. We're out in front of the Penovation Works Complex at 3401 Grays Ferry Avenue. Thank you for tuning in. We're live.
the Penn Ovation District incubator system is uh, now turned towards creating weapons and uh, while at the same time benefiting from tax breaks. I think we're going to hear more about that shortly as they set up the sound system. we notice is that the Philly uh, Police Department will always send out counter-terrorism, counter-terrorism marked trucks and badges on the police. That's one, two, So the Philly police, as a matter of practice, send out marked counter-terrorism troops to demos, particularly Palestine demos. The people united will never be Another one over there. You 
union in Philadelphia that says we're voting uncommitted in November. That says not now, not ever, no genocide ever. My wages will not be stolen from me to perpetrate a genocide against my people, against my so we're out at, on Grays Ferry Avenue. We're at Grays Ferry Avenue, uh, outside the Penovation Incubator, near the Schuylkill River. It's a windy day. The uh, Ghost Robotics Company has been making little robot dogs for the IDF, Raphael Industries. So that's been controversial, and they've been they have a tax benefit. We got a couple hundred people out here today, here in Philly. To kill innocent people in Gaza. You don't secure a billion dollar contract, nine hundred ninety nine dollars, nine hundred ninety nine million dollars. Where's the lead band? Because you're because that's a good job. Because you're an honest person. It's because you're complicit. You're enabling and abetting. You are giving all our wages to genocide, and we say no. Philly workers say no. Philly workers say no. Philly workers say down, down with that violent oppression. We say down, down. We will not be complicit. We will not end in a bed. We'll use everything we have, all the tools we have, all of our time, all of our relationships to build a better world that starts with the liberation of Gaza and ends with the liberation of us all. Philly's a fucking union town and our unions are coming for you. We are not asking nicely because it's not a request. We are taking what we are owed. We are coming for our checks. Yes. People in Southwest Philadelphia know all too well what it is to have things stolen from you, to be manipulated by people who employ you, who extract from you, and use your resources to dominate you and your neighbors and all other people. We say not today. It ends today. Yeah. Resistance is the only thing that makes sense. Make some noise for yourselves. Give it up for our amazing MCs today. Give it up for our incredible speakers today. Give it up for each and every one of you for building the relationships within your workplaces, within your communities, within your families to build the world we want and deserve. And give me all the noise you can to let everybody on this corner know that we are here for a liberated Palestine today, right now. that happens behind this fence which we are about to talk about uh -huh. the university of petrification knows no bounds in the ways they extract and steal and lie and manipulate the only thing that penovation does is is murder and harm we'll hear about that in a moment tell the truth come on thank you sam thank you people Woo! all right all right all right can i get a free palestine free palestine Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! All right, um, I have, uh, coming up on the mic, Cindy from Shutdown Ghost Robotics, Woo! reading remarks yeah! from a comrade. Come on, Cindy! Yeah! Break the time for us, Cindy. Stand right here. Woo! That was awesome, coming across that bridge. Woo! That was awesome. I want to make it clear, yes, uh, my name's Cindy, but this speech was written by one of our organizers with Ghost Robotics named Maddie. So give it up for Maddie. My name is Maddie, and I am an organizer with JVP and SJP at Bryn Mawr and Haverford Colleges. I am honored to be standing beside people who support liberation and justice for Palestine. People who resist the annihilation of Gaza. And people who refuse to be silenced in the, in the face of Penn's intimidation. Israel's genocidal campaign in Gaza is entering its seventh month. In the past half year, Israel has killed over 34,000 Palestinians, including 
over 14,000 children. I believe somebody said it was 14,500. Uh, and wounded nearly 75,000 civilians. Many thousands are missing, presumed dead under the rubble. Let that sink in for a minute. All the people that died over a course of hours, laying in the cold, dark, starving, wounded, and died under the rubble. Think about the families that are going back to their homes now in Khan Yunus. And all that's left is rubble. And they know that when they look at, at their old home decimated, that underneath the rubble is part of their family. Uh, while Gaza is almost 6,000 miles away, the tools being used to dispossess. Come over here next, next to me. And here, here's the wonderful picture. Used to dispossess, displace, and destroy life in Gaza are being devised in our own backyard. That's right, just across the Schuylkill. Just came. It Gray's Ferry in Panovation. Penn's Innovation District holds a company called, it's a robotics company, and it's called Ghost Robotics. And I believe somebody was giving out flyers to tell you more about, uh, about Ghost Robotics. Um, it's manufacturing these robotic dogs that are sold to the IDF and used in Gaza against Palestinians. Ghost Robotics was founded by two UPenn engineering students, Gavin Kenielli and Avik D, in 2015, and has since become the number one supplier of legged robots to the U.S. and allied governments. So far we found that, that, that they, there are four in Gaza which were donated. Who donated them? They cost $165,000 each. Um, let's see. You really? They have sold over 450 robots in all to more than 25 clients, each at a cost of $160,000. These robots dogs, these robot dogs, can be, hold the sign up, <laughs> can be readily combined with other weapons such as aerial drones and machine guns and have already been deployed for many of the U.S. Empire's problems. From Gaza, from Gaza to the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, you can see that they have like a flat back on them so they can serve as a takeoff and landing pad for drones. Oh. Oh. Um, And also, they have been sold, and they are in co 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 collaboration with the New York Police Department. And we, and we know how nice those guys are, right? In Gaza, the IDF K-9 unit has been, quote, testing these robotic dogs to surveil, quote, unsafe places before raids and military actions. They send them in. <laughs> the military industrial complex routinely uses Palestine as a laboratory to develop and battle test their weapons and surveillance technology, which they then export to the rest of the world the dystopian reality of weaponized robotic dogs are already here. 
in the United States and being deployed by the Office of Homeland Security. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I just had to find the next paragraph. <laughs> I am certain that this integration of guns. Oh, wait a minute. I have to. I have to go back. I skipped a paragraph. Hold on. Hold on. When Ghost showed off the capacity of the robot dogs to be armed at a military conference in 2021, Penn Engineering Professor Daniel uh, Kodichak publicly asked not to be associated with the company anymore. He felt they'd strayed from the company's original stated mission of search and rescue robots for the civilian sector. He raised international law concerns and said he wanted nothing to do anymore with being an arms dealer. He wrote, and I quote, I am certain that this integration of guns with the emerging agility and eventual ubiquity of small-legged machines transgresses a crucial ethical barrier. I understand from the reporting that the present version of your intended new product line is focused on remote control, therefore subjugating its lethal potential to humans. But military technology often falls into the hands of civilian authorities and police forces whose use of it may not be adequately constrained by existing laws or con considerations. We cannot normalize the creation of genocidal technologies in our communities and universities. And we cannot normalize the use of weaponized, remote-controlled robots anywhere in the world, whether it be in Gaza, in the U.S.-Mexico border, or New York City. As it has been made abundantly clear in the past decades and the past six months, the U.S. and Israel do not value Palestinian life and actively seek to eradicate it. We stand here today in defiance against this genocidal alliance. Further, we are standing here today to begin our campaign to shut down Ghost Robotics. as malicious as ghost robotics is an absolute abomination of the so-called Quaker principles of nonviolence okay. and anti-militarism that Penn would like to claim. In direct contrast to Penn, one of the most important Quaker institutions, the American Friends Service Committee, has called for divestment from Israel and was a key leader in the campaign to pressure General Mills to leave the occupied West Bank. Additionally, the Palestinian-led movement for liberation demands divestment from Israel and its military operations. This alliance between the military industrial complex and UPenn's ghost robotics goes beyond UPenn's campus. The city of Philadelphia is complicit too. The city gives very significant tax cuts to Ghost Robotics through the Keystone Innovation Zone Tax Credit Program. And lastly, she says, I want to end this 
by saying that UPenn's complicity in the genocide in Gaza has many layers, and selling robot selling weapons to the IDF through ghost robotics is just one of many. Penn has spent the past six months trying to silence the righteous opposition to this genocide unfolding before our very eyes 24-7. Instead of upholding the universal humanitarian values Penn claims to abide by, they choose to silence their students, faculty, and workers through unrelenting, unrelenting intimidation con tactics. To that we say, we refuse to be silenced. We refuse to be intimidated. And we refuse to be complicit in genocide. Also, lastly, Instagram. Shut, period, down, period, ghost, period, robotics, period. Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! From Philly to Mexico! March. This is a powerful display of power here today. And I'm excited to be a part of it. Hello, my name is Kareem. I am a home care worker here in Philadelphia and proud union member of SEIU Healthcare Pennsylvania. Home care is a job that is often overlooked in our health care system, but I know caregiving is an essential job because we support the most vulnerable people in our city. Yes. It's something that you have to be passionate about because you don't make a lot of money in this field and most caregivers are barely getting by financially. As a caregiver, it is difficult to see the ongoing genocide in Palestine and to learn about the IDF targeting hospitals and healthcare workers destroying Gaza's healthcare system. Since October 8th, there have been more than 435 attacks on healthcare facilities, killing almost 500 healthcare workers. It's easy to draw parallels between the struggles Palestinians face when they cannot access life-saving care and what working people right here experience during the destruction of our own health care system. Right. Right. Palestinians in Gaza struggle to find doctors and facilities during the constant bombing. At the same time, rural hospitals in Pennsylvania are being bought up by big corporations, stripped of resources, 
and closed, forcing people to travel for hours to access care. Shame. Shame. Many black and brown workers in Philadelphia face unemployment or work low paying jobs with no health insurance or access to affordable care. We experience radically different health outcomes based on race, gender, and economic factors. What we experience daily does not compare to the bloodshed and mass murder Palestinians face from Israel. But whether it be Philadelphians or Gazans, why do we have to die trying to access care? Why is life-saving care why is life-saving care being denied to human beings? I learned yesterday that the U.S. government sends billions of dollars to Israel every year. Some of that money, our taxpayer dollars, helps fund free universal health care for Israelis. Now, now I am for universal health care, but many home care workers right here in Philadelphia don't even have health insurance. Why doesn't the U.S. government pay for the free health care for Pennsylvanians? For Philadelphians? Why doesn't the U.S. government pay for free health care for Palestinians? Do we not deserve care? Every day, we are led to believe that there is no money to fix our roads, to repair and staff our schools, and to build housing we can afford. Our neighborhoods are stripped of good jobs and resources that could create safe, stable environments. But somehow there is always money for war. Some of these weapons used to murder people in Gaza are the same ones that ter terrorize black and brown communities, all of our communities, right here in Philadelphia. Hey folks, there's a fire, there's a fire uh, truck going. Some of the, the crowd moved pretty quick uh, out of the way of the fire truck. used to terrorize us all. Here in Philadelphia, we have the Philadelphia Police Department getting trained on military tactics by the IDF, who practice on Gazans and then come home to brutalize our communities. We have major weapons manufacturers right outside, right outside our city, who build the war machines being used in Gaza right now. It feels like we are both fighting against powers that seem unbeatable at times. But all of us are here today because we know that this is not normal. That's right. That's right. And that we cannot allow this to continue. Right. It is our responsibility as workers, especially as healthcare workers, to fight for peace in Palestine and across the world. As a caregiver and a union member, I know that we have the strength and the power if we all stand together. Being in my union has taught me that we can fight for respect, a better health care system, and dignity for all. It's taught me that we can we can take back and build power when we organize. With this framework, I know that our movement can work together like a union to stop this genocide. Together, we can demand that our city and state divest pensions from weapons manufacturers that profit off of genocide. We can demand that our elected officials call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. We can demand
understand that humanitarian aid makes it to two million Palestinians in need. Today's action has been amazing, but it's not enough to talk only to those who agree with us. We need to grow our movement for peace. We need to grow our movement for peace. We must continue to educate ourselves, our co-workers, and our communities about what is going on in Palestine. And about how our country is complicit in this genocide. Every day the people of Gaza wake up and fight for the right to exist. It is our duty to stand with Palestine. Gaza's fight is our fight. We have a duty to make our government listen to us. We have a duty to build a movement so powerful that they can't ignore us. Are you ready to organize? Are you ready to fight? I said, are you ready to fight? I believe you. Are you ready to win? Because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Thank you very much. Free Palestine. What kind of power? speaker is a, uh, a member of Starbucks Workers United. Uh, please welcome to the mic, My Joy. Hello everyone, I'm My Joy. I'm speaking on behalf of, well, not like on behalf of the union, but as an individual here in support of Palestine. Um, and I would just like to start off with the fact that Starbucks is finally agreeing to bargain with the union is not some type of benevolent act of goodwill. It is a direct result of the unrelenting pressure from the boycotts and divestments demanded by Palestinians and their supporters. Starbucks has turned a blind eye to the suffering of Palestinians by silencing our union for publicly stating our solidarity with Palestine while raking in all of the profits from their stores all around the world. They've been complicit in the oppression of an entire people. And now, only because their bottom line is being threatened, they're willing to sit down and talk. But I will not be fooled. While they're trying to play nice at the bargaining table, they're still trying to silence us for speaking in support of Palestine. They're still going after our union with lawsuits and intimidation tactics, trying to crush any semblance of dissent. However, we will not be silenced. We have the right to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian resistance. We have the right to support and respect the demands of Palestinian workers. And we are not going to let Starbucks or anyone else bully us into submission. We can't ignore the bigger picture here from the demands of the Palestinian General Federation of Trade Unions. They're very crystal clear, and it's high time we take them seriously. They aren't asking for handouts or empty promises. They are demanding justice. They are demanding accountability. And they are demanding that we stand in solidarity with them against the unprecedented torment that Israel continues to exhibit. So let's not mince words here. Israel's brutal occupation of Palestine is a stain on humanity. And Starbucks, by continuing to do business as usual, is, is complicit in that oppression. We can't just sit back and pretend like everything is fine while our Palestinian brothers and sisters are suffering. They are calling for an end to the occupation and for the right of return to pa for Palestinian refugees They're, and for the dismantling of illegal settlements. And you know what? It is our duty to stand with them and amplify their voices. So let's not just stop 
at bargaining with the union. Let's go further. Let's use our platforms to express and expose the atrocities that are happening in Palestine right now every single day. Let's demand that Starbucks complies with the demands of the PDF to you and we show the solidarity with the Palestinian people and let's not forget as union workers from all sectors we are being called upon to organize and be a voice for those who are displaced starving and martyred in Palestine our solidarity extends beyond the confines of our workplace it reaches across borders and oceans to stand with those who are suffering under the weight of oppression we cannot idly stand by while Palestinians are being denied their basic rights, freedoms, and especially land. We must use our collective power to advocate for justice, to demand accountability, and to ensure that the voices of the marginalized are heard loud and clear. So let's rise to the occasion and stand shoulder shoulder with the Palestinian people and show that justice will be served. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! We owe them our endurance. Our final speaker today will be Kim from Philadelphia Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance. Hey everybody, uh, I'm a little nervous since this is the last one. Thank you. I'm with the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance Philadelphia chapter, also with Labor for Black Lives Coalition. Throughout our shared histories as people and as workers of the global majority, um, we have witnessed the pervasive impact of U.S. militarism both in our home countries and within U.S. borders. So many of us here are in the United States because the U.S. was there. Examples such as the war in Southeast Asia, where my family was, they still are, serve as stark reminders with lasting scars evident in our community still grappling with the repercussions from generations of Vietnamese people that live with the health and genetics, genetic impacts of U.S.-made Agent Orange and White Phosphorus from the U.S.-made deton undetonate bombs scattered across the countrysides of Laos and Cambodia from the unjust incarceration and deportation of people right here in the United States yeah. from, 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 you can probably fill in with a really long list, right? Yeah. To the 295,000 deaths a year from poverty right here in the United States. Yeah. 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 To our loved ones. <laughs> To our loved ones dying at the hands of the U.S. healthcare system. To, to our underfunded, understaffed schools, nursing homes, daycares, libraries, and all public services, despite the fact that Philadelphia is the poorest big city in the United States. And yet there's always money for war. The bombs dropped in Vietnam explode at home. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said this. The bombs dropped overseas explode at home. So let's be clear. The U.S. government made a deliberate choice to fund the Israeli apartheid state and a genocide of Palestinian people while the people here in the United States struggle for food, for health care, and for shelter. 
Corporations are making billions while Palestinians are killed by U.S.-funded genocide and occupation. And as we all talked about today, they're using our tax dollars to do it. The Pennsylvania School District employees' retirement system is invested in arms companies, Israeli treasury bonds, and companies that have been publicly criticized by the UN for supporting illegal settlements in occupied Palestine. And many of these companies are places where our union siblings work. And, you know, as, as union folks, we, we hear this argument pretty often, right? Like Joe Biden said it himself. War supplies are made in America and therefore good for American jobs. Are we going to no. accept that? No. Are we going to accept this manufactured division? No. So here in the belly of the beast, we reject the premise that good union jobs in America must come at the cost of, of civilian lives in Hassa. No. That's right. We reject that good union jobs must come at the cost of our working class unity. No. And as workers, we have the obligation to stand with our working class siblings, no matter where they are in the world. And in our unions and our organizations, we can do that. So, you know, we're, we're not begging, right? We, this is a struggle. Um, and we're gonna struggle. We might have to struggle for a long time, but we're gonna win. And we're gonna win because we know that we're on the right side of history. We're going to win because we have unity and because we learn time and time again to stand in solidarity with one another, not just here in the United States, but across the world. So to wrap up, I'm going to need you all to say this with me, okay? We're not going to let them distract us. We're going to stick together. We're going to stick together. We're going to organize because we know that an injury to one is an injury to all. Thank you.
So we're out here on Graves Ferry Avenue in Philadelphia near the Schuylkill River. Um, there's this banner over here that says Pennovation Kills. Can I just get a shot of the banner behind y'all? Thank you. So um, the issues about Pennovation um, has been that they are helping fund and give a tax benefit. It's basically an incubated business called Ghost Robotics. And uh, there's a sign down there about ghost robotics and genocide on the sidewalk. So I'm just going to do that. Maybe we'll grab a couple more interviews. Uh, just hang in here a minute. Uh, this march left from uh, Clark Park uh, in West Philly earlier today. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, we're going to have some more information about Ghost Robotics. We've been researching it since uh, the rally that we saw on April 4th. Uh, Ghost Robotics is, uh, gets subsidies from the government. It's based in the building in the background there, this, this Penovation, uh, Penovation Works complex here. Uh, so there's definitely like tax benefits. Uh, basically, it's like instead of that money going to housing and healthcare and things like that, instead it's going to build these dogs that are the robot dog devices that are uh, used by Israel. They're not real dogs like those little dogs. They're uh, these robot dogs. So, so that's basically one of the main uh, points about today's demo. This banner saying "Penovation kills." So, hang on a second here. Give me one second. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we came out today to get workers out because we know that the labor of people that work together and organize and unionize, we are the ones that hold these businesses accountable. We are the ones that make these businesses money. And if we get together on a united front, you know, that allows these. Um, corporations to listen to our voices so our demands can be met and if we are able to do the same thing with Palestine we know that those demands will be met and we will continue to do that as far as long as we have to and I'm just really proud of everyone that came out um, just so many different workers unions in support of Palestine because I don't feel like enough people are speaking out um, so I hope that for the next time we do more union marches and more workers coming out that we are agitating more people to put the pressure on them to be able to come out and speak up for Palestine because genocide and and tearing apart families and, and people who are martyred is wrong you know and it goes so much more beyond Palestine it, go, it just goes into being human and just fighting for humanity essentially so yeah um, where can people learn about the, the Starbucks Workers Union? Where, where, how do they learn about the, the, that specific campaign? Um, as far as the Starbucks Workers Union, um, you can follow us on like the Starbucks Workers United. Uh, pretty much like you type that into like any social media platforms. Um, we come up SB Workers United on Instagram. Um, and we're pretty much just like really trying to put pressure on having fair contracts and having good hours. but now that we're able to bargain and that our union and that Starbucks wants to bargain with our union, that has only been possible because of the boycotts and because of the divestments um, from Starbucks. And I can only give that to the Palestinian people for allowing us to have that <laughs> in solidarity. So, yeah. I feel like I saw something about the management uh, attacking your union using Palestine as an excuse uh, earlier in this. Did you remember? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. Talk about um, so yeah, on Twitter we had someone had put out a 
tweet that was since deleted um, in support of standing with Palestine, and then we got hit with a lawsuit. Um, and that just shows that they want to silence us. They don't want us to talk about what's going on in today's issues, but that is only a reflection of how they also treat us in the workplace, of constantly trying to silence our unions as well. Anything else you want to add right now? Or um, points or anything? Free Palestine. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. I thank really appreciate you. it. So we went out live. That, that just went out live. So thank you so much. It's, it was good. That was well done. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, thanks. We appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, I think we're going to go down here. The the crowds are kind of parting ways and everything. And what was your name again? My Joy. My Joy, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And if you can support our work at unicornriot.ninja slash donate, we just try to talk to the people that are involved in these things and help illustrate, uh, you know, the different groups that are involved, the different organizing strategies, how these things come together, where they're going, uh, and sort of bring that, you know, right from the street level when these things are happening. So thank you all for tuning in, everyone. I think we'll uh, call the broadcast there. Thank you for Chris on the back end. If you can support us at unicornriot.ninja slash donate or make a regular donation on Patreon or other services. And please follow us on social media uh, because the algorithms don't always help us. But if you're sharing our work, even if you can't make a donation, helps a lot. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We appreciate it. And, uh, and follow us uh, on YouTube as well and, and uh, Twitch and Facebook when we go live and on Twitter. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. I sure do. I sure do. I did drink about a half liter of water and I had like four Ricolas throughout the day. They always send out the counter-terrorism police whenever there's a demo. Yeah, thanks everyone tuning in. Like I said, they always send out the counter-terrorism police. Thank you all for ch chatting in the chats as well. Thank you, everybody. That was terrific. I'm going to try to make it out on Monday, but I just can't really, like, no stress. I don't want to, yeah, people would be counting on me and they don't show up. I was about to talk to Sam Rice, too, about their need for uh, marshals in Center City, so I would, I